come check out the biggest dreadnought in the history of ever for the Horus Heresy. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, taking a look at the Custodes brand new Telamon Dreadnought. This big baddie is definitely large and in charge when it comes to the Dreadnought scene. Now, I haven't compared it to a Leviathan Dreadnought. I don't have one of those together, but I know they are, are on a similar size base. So it is possible they're about the same size each. Now, they did post up a picture of the uh, size comparison of these on Forge World's Facebook page, but I remember it definitely outranking the the Contemptor class, but again, don't have a comparison to the Leviathan. So we know those two are the big heavyweights out there in the Dreadnought arena. Now this particular model, I don't think at this time, at least when we recorded it, is available uh, separately, or to order from Forge World at least. I'm sure it'll be a new release here at some point. We picked this up from Warhammer Fest uh, a few weeks back on Memorial Day weekend. So you can see here, there's the goods right there, and there is the ginormous Dreadnought or Dreadnought size base. I actually think, man, I think that's the same one that the Lord of Change comes on, glancing over at my display case right here. So I'm not exactly sure that this is the same size as the Leviathan. It might actually be bigger. So let's take a look at the components here at the very least before we start diving in. Now there is two different weapon options currently for this, uh, for this big baddie right here. There's the exploded view. You can see all of the different parts. You got the, uh, from the, <laughs> I don't even know how to say this and I'm not even gonna try, but the bolt launcher that goes on top, kind of uh, dorsally, I guess, top mounted, whatever you wanna call it there. The two different legs, shoulder joints, the upper sarcophagus, your missile vents, six and seven are your missile vents right off the back of that bolt launcher there. Then you've got the head, which of course slots in very similar to what we've seen in the past, especially with the Leviathan Dreadnought itself. Two different arm mounts right there, which are very similar again to the Leviathan. The hip, uh, left lower leg, your hips right here, kind of like a ball and socket type, type deal. So obviously a lot of posability here. Uh, so the bolt launcher mount, which is gonna be your piece right here that looks like it could kind of faux swivel. Not exactly sure yet, we'll run that down here in a second. Your different legs, your engine, your pauldrons right here. Boom and boom, left and right. More sarcophagus bits. Right contour and left contour. Oh, that's on the, the flanks right here. And then your flat foot and your stepping foot. So you can have the different combinations of walking and uh, I guess kind of flat footed like you see right here. You can have all sorts of different posability here. And then jumping over to the instructions themselves. I think there was only 10, nope, there was eight different steps to this one. But again, it is a big model. So you're gonna wanna check all your resin, uh, all your you know, mold lines, everything like that. Make sure you get a good dry fit before you glue everything down. You wanna wash all this stuff, warm soapy water. I use a Dawn liquid detergent myself when I'm cleaning all this stuff up. Leave it out to dry overnight. You're good to go for the next day. So here we go. You can kind of see the different components. Always wanna dry fit this stuff here. There's your stepping foot. Two different leg assemblies here that lock into the hips. And then of course you can dry fit all this. You can use a little bit of poster tack if you want. It makes it a lot easier. Then your top sarcophagus, your upper sarcophagus. So it looks like you have to glue the head in just like the Leviathan first with this upper sarcophagus type deal. So if you wanna paint this separately and in stages, I would definitely recommend keeping all of these parts off to paint them separately. Maybe gluing the arms on separate uh, together here, which is fine and we'll look at some magnetization options there, but that would be my gut instinct right there. And there's our bolt launcher with the missile vents and you can put it in and kind of make it poseable up and top. So it looks like there's gonna be interchangeable hard points on the top, the, uh, the uh, dorsal mount up here. And then you've got the two different weapon arms that uh, I believe are separately sold. And here you can see there's two different options for a closed fist or a open fist. And then the storm cannon as well, all of the different parts right there. So it looks like they have the, the county war kind of pieces that go on the side there just to give a little bit of flare. And then the guns itself. Each weapon is designed to be assigned a uh, symbol for both the left and right arms of the dreadnought. So depending on what you want to do there, you can kind of mount it in. So there you can see this is what comes with this kit. And then of course you got the two different weapon options at current time, which are right here, the Telemundo, uh, Telemon Storm Cannon, and then the 
close combat weapon right there. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at all of this stuff first off because it is a bunch of parts and I want to make sure we get we get a good look at all of this detail because like I said this is a ginormous model okay so first off let's set this here so here is lay all this stuff out as we get to it okay so here's our sarcophagus front which you can tell is pretty ginormous I mean it's got great detail here on the Palantine Eagle it almost kind of looks at first glance, if I didn't know any better, almost like the Thousand Suns right there, but we all know that is not the case. Not, not even a little bit. Now, compared to the Contemptor, you can definitely tell that is way beefier. It definitely dwarfs the whole top right there. Almost the whole assembly. It's almost as wide as the legs and arms, once the arms are on here, as this uh, Contemptor for the Custodes right here. So that's pretty interesting. Here's its base, which again is looks to be the 100 mil round. When you compare it there, that's definitely the greater demon base right there on that one. And you can see right here, that's our normal dreadnought size base. So this is a big boy and no doubts right there. So there's our sarcophagus. Here's some of the mounts for the weapons here. And that's gonna be your, your bolt cannon elevator right there. So you can see from what it looks like, you could probably do some sort of magnetization there depending on how these socket in. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the arm part. Let's find the arm parts. Where are they? Let's take a look here. That is, oh, that is the arm part nine. It goes down to the arm. Okay, so that is the arm mount. So that's them right there. And then that attaches to this somehow, which looks to, huh, that's weird. How does that work? Did they actually put in room? Oh, wow, look at that. They did put in room for magnets. So that is perfect. So that is the, that is the mount for the storm cannon. That is the, the lower half of the arm and they mate perfectly right there. So that is actually already pre-drilled for magnets. That's pretty neat. So I couldn't tell you what size that is. That definitely looks like a quarter inch right there. Let me see, do I have a tape? I do have a tape measure handy. So let's take a look at that. So we're looking at roughly, trying to get the full diameter here, right along the circumference not the circumference, right along the, the center measurement there. So it's definitely bigger than a quarter. It's not bigger than a quarter. So we're looking at one, two, three eighths, bigger than three eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven sixteenths, it looks like, wide. Uh, I imagine that's in diameter. You might be able to get three eighths right there. One, two, three, no, three eighths is too short. Well, you could do it with three eighths, whatever your standard size is, and that definitely looks to be at least, because there's gonna be a recess here where it's gonna lock into there. So you're probably looking at, I would say that's at least one eighth. So if you got two, maybe three eighths by one eighths magnets, it's gonna be a little shorter than that diameter, but that would definitely lock you in right there. Just my gut feeling right there, but obviously get it, check it out. I'll go through your magnets and see what will fit it right there. So that's really cool to see. That's that's the first time, I mean, definitely we didn't see that with the Leviathan, right? That's the first time we've seen magnet holes pre-drilled for these bad boys there. So since we got this out, let's take a look at the bolt cannon itself. Wow, look at that detail on all those missiles. Holy cow, that's crisp. That is pretty sweet. And then we got the, all the vents right here. And then there's gonna be the little two little vent pieces right there. It looks like a piece of mold got stuck. Whenever you see something like that, you wanna make sure you get in there with your X-Acto blade and, and scrape that out. That is not gonna hold paint. So that's gonna be a, uh, a bare spot. Once you prime it, it, paint will never stick to that. So if you ever see any of that light blue mold RTV rubber right there, you're always gonna to wanna to scrape that out. So this looks pretty cool. Uh, looks like the wires, yep. So you can actually mount this. This doesn't look like it's fake. 
you can definitely lock this in however you want, perhaps even magnetize it or put a piece of uh, poster tack in there and have it so you could theoretically kind of move it right there. That's a pretty, that's a pretty neat little missile launcher. And when you look at it, that also looks like it's magnetized. Let's find the top dorsal. So here's the top dorsal plate and yep, it looks like that's magnetized too. So these pieces will all be easily magnetizable. Once you figure out, like I said, one probably, probably three eighths by one eighth. It'll be a little bit shorter, but I think it'll get you there. All right, so let's, since we're up at the top, let's continue looking at all of the top parts. So there's your back piece of their sarcophagus with the, the traditional venting we've seen from all the custody stuff. Here's, you can get a look at the uh, Achilles, very similar there, just like on a larger scale, but it doesn't look like they just hit, hey, make this a larger scale. They actually went through and re-rendered it with lots of new wires and little sockets and things like that. So that's really cool to see. So there's part one, and where's the rest of the sarcophagus? Those are, wow, those paldrons are huge. Holy cow. This thing is insanely big. So that's gonna go on the back here, which explains why it's, you know, with that extreme size, you're gonna be looking at a lot of issues with uh, undercuts and things, and that probably explains why it's two different pieces there. Okay, so here is your arms. So these are your arms that are gonna socket into here. So you're gonna be able to set, oh, actually, nope, it's like this. Yep, there it is. So you're gonna be able to set the angles that you wanna put the arms, and the arms are gonna lock in right here. So kind of like that, right? I think that's it. Yep, there it is right there. Wow, this thing is so huge, holy cow. I love this thing. I'm, I'm in love with this model already. This thing is tight. All right, and here's your uh, front groin plate with your sockets for your hips and then a couple of extra pieces of flash that you're going to want to trim off. Great styling right there. Uh, here's your, whoops, here's your hips. The Telemann's hips don't lie. So that locks in. Wow, check that out. That's incredible detail right there. Great little eagle there with little swirlies that you see traditionally on the decals. So you can kind of flare it out, give it a wide stance, or kind of pull it in, give it a little bit smaller of a stance, kind of depending on what you want to do right there. But lots of great detail, both sides. And let's see, here's our, these are our shins. Let's see, which way does it go? I think it goes like this. Yeah, so it goes like this. So these are gonna lock into here. Kind of like, yep, kind of like this. Are they specific? That'd be weird if they're specific. I bet you they're different. I mean, I bet you they're the same. Why would you not? Okay, yeah. So these are gonna lock in like this. It looks like they are not specific. Nope, they're not. So they're gonna lock in like this, and those are gonna give you your shin plates right there, which will leave you room to lock in whichever feet you choose from, whether you're going the flat foot right here, or if you're going with the striding foot, this is a striding foot actually, that's the plane that you would mount it to. That is a chunk of resin. I mean, that's almost bigger than a Space Marine right there, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Okay, so there's all of our, so you can see right there that it's actually stepping up off of the table, whereas this one's 100% flat on the table right there. Um, what else do we got? Oh, these are the paldrons, check this out. These are ginormous as well. So these lock in here somehow. Looks like they slot into right there to those grooves, to those hemispherical grooves. Yep, they sure do. Wow, look at the profile of this thing. Holy cow, this thing is easily, easily dwarfs the other Dreadnought, the other Contemptor Dreadnought. That is just crazy talk right there. Whew, man, this thing is big. Okay, so there's that, there's the other one. And it's got some great style in here. Lots of good little bolts. Um, let's see, we got lots of bolts little kind of uh, fleur-de-lis pattern right there that you can, I guess you can put it on the front or the back, depending on no, it has to be on the front. This is, uh, it doesn't look like it'll go either way. So that is gonna be the front for, for sure. You can kind of see in the cast, you can kind of see some little swirlies there, like this was 3D printed and then cast maybe, but only in this piece right here, it looks like. Yeah, only in that piece right there. So I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Maybe it's the mold release or something. No, it's not coming off. 
I was thinking maybe it would just be an impression from the mold release. So maybe they didn't shave this or maybe they didn't file this down too much. Or you can do that acetone technique where it takes off the little lines from 3D printing. But if they look to still be on this one here, which I think would be the model's left powder on. But that might just be a little oversight or it might just be a little uh, overestimate, over, you know, overzealous uh, kind of complaint right there. But it's, the thing still looks great. And I don't even know if after you prime it, if you would even be able to see it, to be honest. And then there's the head right there and the courtiers and the exhaust for the back launcher. And I think that's it for the main parts. Now, remember, like I was saying, you're probably going to want, because if you attach that head, and that is a ginormous head. So if you're going to want to paint that separate, you may want to actually paint it separate, or if you wanted a different color, you may actually want to paint it a different color and then glue your assemblies onto here and then maybe tape that off or something and then do the rest of the pieces there. But there's lots of, if you're into airbrushing to get things done, there's lots of easily airbrushable parts here that I think will go down great. Now here's the, we already looked and discovered that that was magnetizable, but here's the bolt cannon itself, which funny story, is literally bigger than the Contemptor from feet to head. <laughs> How hilarious is that? Wow, that is a rather large gun right there. Holy cow. But incredibly detailed, you can see all sorts of rifling right there. You got some power packs, great little barrels, some flaring, all sorts of things right there. And then of course, We've got the bolt cannon arm, which, let's clear this out a little bit. Dump all these. So you've got your two different sets of open and closed fingers right there. This is in itself the hand, uh, which is gonna lock into right here. And then that, let's see. Oh, there's our socket. So there's our socket, there's our pivot, a pivot armor plate that gets gonna go across right there. And then, how does this work? Does it pivot into here? Yeah, it pivots into here, and that locks into there. So that gives us that twist on the hand. So it's gonna assemble something like this, whereas this piece, this armor piece is gonna be on the back right here. So it's gonna form a sort of assembly, and then you can figure out which finger, whoops, which finger you're gonna put on the front of that right there and then attach your little courtiers on uh, both the left and the right sides here of your little pivot. But remember, that's the magnet slot for that one too. So there it is, man, this thing's crazy. Now normally when we unbox these sort of things, we talk about the rules form, but unfortunately at this point, there is no rules form. So I don't know if when it goes live on Forge World's site, that there will be rules for this in the download section. Remember, we don't exactly know what's going on with the Horus Heresy series. Uh, with the untimely uh, death of Alan Bly. So maybe it's going to 8th, maybe it's going to 7th, maybe there'll be rules for this in 40K, maybe there'll be rules for this in Horse Heresy. It's really hard to say at this point, unfortunately, but this is a really exciting model that I think a lot of, uh, you know, Dreadnoughts are always a fan favorite, and now in 8th edition, with all the toughness values and things like that, I think this is gonna quickly, be easily become just as popular as the Leviathan Dreadnought itself. So that's all we got here. We can't go over any, any rules because there's actually, I would bust out the book. I have it right here, I, I assure you, uh, the Inferno book, but there are no rules in here for it. And there are no rules in here to try to even figure out what some of these weapons will do, I guess, um, to be honest. Um, it's it's just really hard to say at this point. It's all pure conjecture, and I don't I try to avoid that as much as possible. So we'll just end it here. If you if you like our video features here on the channel, make sure you subscribe to us, turn on notifications so you can be the first to know when we post new videos, and like and comment on them. And head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today.